Hello and welcome. This is going to be a Let's Play on a game called Ostriv that just released Alpha 3 earlier yesterday as of recording this. This is a city building game themed around, I believe, some sort of Eastern European uh, immigrant story. But uh, I had something going on in Alpha 2, but this is a new Alpha, so let's go ahead and start a new city here, shall we? I think I remember one of these maps being better than... Uh, I think this is the one I always play, so let's do that. All right, so the first thing you're going to do, I always like to just kind of survey the land here. Uh, I think I've always just kind of put my dudes right here, houses here, whatever. But first thing you want to do, pause the game. You have to choose a location for your settlers to settle down. So everything in the game is going to show up in this bottom part. For right now, we haven't settled, so we have to choose our camp location. So I like to put this in this general area over here, so it's closer to the, uh, the trees. So we'll put this guy here. Uneven terrain, okay. Put that there, we'll start the clock. So the first main challenge of this game is you have to have houses for all of your residents, the people, the families and tents before winter starts or they're gonna move out. So what we have to do first, you have to go down here, you have houses, you have water, you have production, Trade and transport, government, decoration, education, they're still working on, health, still working on, but religion is one of the things they expanded, and they had now have churches that you can do. People can go and uh, do religious rituals there, but we're going to go ahead and go into production. They've added a couple things here since the last one. We'll get in there as we get there, but first we have to place a forestry. Uh, I like to try and build on a grid if I can. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you place this the first time, you just want to make sure that it's pretty close to forests so our guys are going to go right here we'll zoom in and you can see people walking around the graphics in this game are pretty good but they're going to get started we have in here you can see we have five builders we have 27 people total right now uh three men and nine women are currently looking for jobs so what we can do we can go ahead and open up some builder positions this game likes to assign jobs based on gender for some reason so only men are going to be allowed to be builders and there's certain other jobs that uh, are only able to be filled by men certain jobs that are only able to be filled by women or you can choose both there's uh, some economic stuff that we can't really get into quite yet but these guys are going to you can see it has all the resources that you're going to be gathering everything that you need so everything that you need for the first probably the first season couple seasons is going to be brought with the settlers when they come in you can see they have camp storage they've got some iron they've got nails and thatch but we're going to want to uh, get those things building as soon as we possibly can so they're building the forestry what we can do buildings will always be built sequentially but you can queue them up so you're going to need a clay pit your clay pit cannot be moved once it's put in so make sure that's the spot you're going to want it to stay it's not like it really matters but so you're going to need a clay pit if you run out of nails, you are boned. So what we're going to do, uh, we can press T or R to rotate the building. Or if you want to rotate it 90 degrees, you can press F, which is what I usually do because I like things to be kind of in a uh, nice, even area. The green part of the building is where people will be entering it. So we're going to put, this is called a smithy. It's not going to want me to place this here for some reason. Uneven terrain, that's weird. All right. It doesn't like any of these places. All right. So Smithy's going to go there. Uh, you're also going to need thatch. So I believe that is going to be thatchery. Okay, stuff got moved around a little bit. Again, you see this green thing where they're going to come in. Uh, thatch is these things. They're going to gather these reeds on the uh, water line here. So you're going to want it to be kind of close to that because the people will commute. I guess if you can call walking commuting. I guess that counts. Then you're also going to need a charcoal pile. Charcoal is necessary to do a couple different items in the game. So you're going to want a couple of these. I'm going to go ahead and put... We'll start with two. So this game's economy is based off of... You have workers that are assigned to a building specifically. And then you have what's called laborers. And laborers can basically go do any job. 
that is open. Okay, that doesn't want me to put that there for some reason. So let's go ahead and move this. Man, all this terrain is uneven. Is it really that bad? I guess. It's not it's not that bad. Alright, come on. Let me put this here. Alright, so we have two charcoal piles. That just builds instantly. So it says looking for laborers to gather firewood. So what you're gonna want to do. You have to open up labor positions if they're not already open. So you're going to go down to this uh, tab. This is higher options right here. Now it says you're going to hire up to 20. Hire men, hire women. You can adjust the wage if you want to prioritize different items. We can get to that later. So what we need to do now, this forestry is almost ready. We can start figuring out where we're going to want houses to go. So you can see every house is going to require 1,000 clay, 5,000 wood, 100 nails, and 300 thatch. So what I like to do usually is I'll start building houses kind of close to where this camp center is, just so it's a little convenient for them to get to. Uh, let's see, is this really... That's not technically straight up and down. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that much. So I'm going to go here, and if you see uh, on the bottom of the screen it's showing you can place multiple buildings if you hold shift, so that's what we're going to do. I lied, that's what we're going to do now. So... See how this is the top of this is butting up against that plot. You can make it a small, you can make it big, you can skew it if you have to uh, account for different things. I like to kind of cram these in here, so we'll do that. We'll do one more. Remember, we have nine families, I believe. Yes, nine families. So we need to build nine houses. We'll do four on this side. We'll do our rotation like that and you can after you place the first one you can kind of shove these in but if you do it the wrong way then the game will kind of get mad at you and make you adjust so you can't you can't always get away with putting these exactly where you want them but you can get pretty close and if it's not perfectly straight it doesn't really matter so there's eight houses I'm gonna put the ninth right here now, fun fact, the very first house that is done is where your mayor is going to live. So you can see, if we go back to our camp center, this guy, I have no idea how to even begin pronouncing that name, but he is currently working as the mayor, I guess kind of coordinating people. This uh, forestry is almost done. It says all resources are collected. They're currently building it. Remember, we're on the slowest speed, so we can speed this up a little bit. Now these guys are moving around. So they're done with that. What we can do now is we can hire guys. Well, we only have one guy left to do it. And it's going to require to actually cut logs in this game. You see this exclamation point. You have to have workers. You have to have a minimum of two. So we're going to take one of our builder guys. And we're going to fire that. And see, now he's working here. So especially early game when you have a very small amount of people that are in your village... You're going to want to be able to allocate effectively, and that's one of the ways you can do that. You can see these guys currently putting things in to build the smithy. You really want to make sure that's done, f not necessarily first, but early on so you have nails. Uh, we're going to let this run for a little bit. All right, now you see the smithy is done. So what we can do is we can go in here to hire options, see how it's grayed out. You can't hire women for whatever reason. A lot of these labor jobs, it won't let you hire women, so... Because we only have so many men, we're going to have to be careful about how we allocate these things. Right now, we need them to be building these houses. So we're not going to worry about that too much. They still have 1,200-some nails. That's not going to be enough to build... I think it actually will be enough to build all the houses. But now, the thatchery is going to be the first building you see. It says, hire men, hire women. We're going to go ahead and untick hire men. Because women... This is one of the very few places that women are allowed to work in a production role. Uh, I think thatchery, farms, and a couple other things we're going to get to eventually is uh, women are allowed to do. But So these ladies are going to get to work harvesting reeds and making thatch. We're going to need that for all these houses. So they're about halfway done building this house. Let's take a look at some of these other buildings. So everyone in these houses is going to need water and a food and a job. So they have income. We can get to the economy later. But they're going to need stuff. So we're going to go ahead and put in... Maybe not a well quite yet. We can put in platforms. So you can get drinking water and water for production from platforms. So I'm going to put one here. Then we'll put another one down here at the very edge of this. And that'll get built eventually. There's already a well right here in the camp center. So that's fine for now. 
And these two guys are getting some wood. They're going to chop it up into firewood, and you can see right here, people are already buying it. The economy system of this game is interesting. The way that it works, you have... I don't know exactly what kind of economic system this would be, but you have people pay rent to the town for living in the town's houses, and they're paid a salary from the town coffers for working a job. And you can... there's different multipliers, but we can't mess with that until we build the town hall. And I generally don't like to build the town hall until everyone's in these houses because then they'll leave if it gets to be November, end of November, and there's no houses here. So this first house should be our mayor. Yep, you see he works at the camp center. If you click on that, it'll take you over here. So that's our mayor and his wife. See, every family starts off with wealth, and they have resources that they come in with. So these are all things that we're going to need to establish for ourselves before uh, spring rolls around, or else people will leave. But yeah, these guys came in with some potatoes, milk. Uh, this, I believe, is like pig fat, sunflower oil, drinking water, and they can always get water from these platforms and stuff. But now we have other people starting to see this wealth is going up. It's because these people are being paid for their jobs, and they're paying rent. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, it's a, it's a very small rate, but we'll adjust that later. So, these guys are in the middle of working on this. Let's take a look at production. Forestry, we've already built farms. We're going to get to work in a little bit. Windmill, after you establish a farm, you can turn wheat into flour. Chicken coops, cow sheds, pigsty, these are all for raising animals. Slaughterhouse is going to slaughter pigs and cows. Chickens get slaughtered in the chicken coop. Tannery, like all these products you can make from different animal parts. This is going to be like hides. You can make shoes of the leather after you hand it hay is for feeding livestock carpentry you can build carts and wagons and stuff charcoal piles we've already built they use that for making nails smithy we've already built clay pit we've already built lime works this is a new building produces lime from quick lime and water and quick lime gets made from limestone and charcoal and you can mine now you have a stone mining camp you says produce stone and limestone from nearby uh, deposits so somewhere on this map, if we scroll around, there's going to be, see these stone, limestone deposit right here. So eventually we're going to build a stone quarry. That's nothing up there. Seems those are all kind of, we're gonna have to build a bridge to get over there that's kind of separated. So we'll get, we don't need lime right off the bat, but lime is helpful for some of the mid late game stuff uh, let's see what else is new here the lime kiln of course stone mining camp taylor's workshop already existed weaver's workshop shoemaker saddlery is new so you can produce horse tack from leather and metal parts metal parts are just a byproduct of the smithy you see it doesn't have anything because we haven't hired anyone yet so let's go ahead oh, i'll get another couple houses built before i hired someone for the smithy but see these women have already reached the maximum amount of thatch and reed that they can hoard. So that's just that one building. You can actually if you go into your trade and transport. You can build warehouses. So non-food storage and then granary for food storage. Um, so we're going to go ahead and queue up a warehouse. So what this allows you to do is you can have people in different seasons do different jobs and you can kind of stack items if you will. So right here we're going to put a couple of warehouses next to each other. Those will get built eventually. Not super worried about that, but once those are built, then what we can do is we can actually rotate people between buildings, between jobs. So you have these four women that are doing this. Now this is full. I can fire them, except I have nowhere for them to go. So this is already full. So we're going to get rid of these late. Well, okay, we'll leave one in case we run out but now what we can do the women can't do a lot of stuff in this game for some reason but they can man market stalls so what we can do is we can go over here i like to just kind of set these up in regular areas so we'll put a stall there we'll put a stall here again you see the green area that it won't let you build in because that's where they uh are selling their stuff so we're going to put probably four of these i'll zoom in put probably four of these out here 
This is kind of a steep angle for you doing this stuff. But we'll do that right there. So now we have four market stalls. And what you can do in each of these guys, and you can select four things per stall that you can sell. So what I always do is just I'll go right down the line. Buckwheat, chicken eggs, chicken meat. And none of this stuff is stuff we have access to yet, so we're just going to leave that alone. Chicken egg, chicken meat, clothing, dried fish. Again, this is not stuff that we have access to. Firewood we do. Firewood and fish. So down here, flour, honey, milk, and pork. And then now we have five of these items left and only four slots. So I'm going to do potato, sallow, salo. Shoes are a product we're not going to get to for a while. So I'm going to put salt and then sunflower oil. What you can do is you can go in here and you can set only to hire women. And you can have your laborers be only men or women. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit apply to all. And all four of these are now, if you go in there, are going to have the same settings, which is nice. We're going to hire one woman for each of these. And she's going to come over here and she will be able to sell to all of the villagers these different items that the town's going to produce. So we still have, she's in here doing her thing. We've got, see, so yeah, we're starting to run out of thatch, so that's good that we built that. Now the smithy, I think we have 500 some nails. We're okay right here. Now these, we can check this. By wagon, we don't have wagons. Okay. Not yet. So another thing you have to be kind of careful of is how you're getting stuff supplied. So you say laborers can do cart, hands, or wagon. I just like to enable all of these if I possibly can. Because every once in a while, I know in Alpha 2 when I was playing this for a lot, there were times where they would run out of uh, space in the carts and they'd just use their hands to carry stuff around and then stuff wouldn't get supplied and people would run out of stuff and get really mad and they'd die or they'd move out. Uh, these guys are still doing their thing cutting. That's fine. Uh, we're almost done building houses, so this is actually good. If all of the houses are built, probably will be finished by either the end of July or the beginning middle of August. That's good because then we can have other things put in place before winter starts. What we're going to want to do is think about these other things. So some stuff you can do in all seasons, like you can chop trees in the winter, you can chop trees in the summer, whatever. And if you're being, f if you're going to go fishing, which uh, fishing dock is down here, fishing is pretty useless in this game unless they refresh. I, this is my first time playing Alpha Three, so. I don't know exactly what we're looking at there, but uh, I found it's really not super worth it. But I'm interested in seeing how this mining works, so we're probably going to build one of those eventually. Uh, it is July, so it's too late to start farming, but that's probably going to be one of the things I'm going to want to make sure we have ready to go before the uh, spring comes around. This oil workshop down here is just for sunflower seeds. Again, you're going to have to grow sunflowers. And so really, none of this is anything we can use until everything is built. But we can go ahead and find us a spot where it's not going to matter if there's all these hay dryers sitting everywhere. So what, what these hay dryers will do, I don't know if you can zoom in see this guy. So this is just a place for your workers to put grass that they cut out to dry. And then your cows, and I think it might just be cows, will eat this. So again, you hold down your uh, your place key and that can go there. These have kind of a wide area that they have to uh, use. Every once in a while, you can find a decent spot to put those. So now what this will do, we have four of these. You see they're putting the uh, the hay on there. Just grabbing that, and they'll be coming down here. Yep, see that? So that'll sit there, and that'll dry. And by the time spring rolls around, we'll have hay reserves. So. What we're going to do now, the last house is being constructed, we're going to start farming. We're going to start planning out for farms. We can't farm until the next spring. So this is your farm building, and your entrance is going to be on the top. Keep in mind that all of your people that are working jobs will be traveling from their home, which for right now is just these nine right here, to their job. So you want to have your job be as close as possible to people's houses. So we're going to put this farm here. Once the farm is built, we'll be able to assign fields. And if your fields are close to the farm and the farm is close to houses, people will be more efficient because they won't have to waste as much time walking back and forth to work. 
So now that we have this last house is almost built, I'm going to go ahead and queue up the town hall building. So we'll go ahead and put this right here like this. And notice as these houses are being built, these uh, tents are disappearing. So what we can do now is I'll put wherever it'll let me. I don't think it's, it's not really wanting me to put these things anywhere. I don't know why. That's, that's just weird, uneven terrain. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, so that's going to have to go here, it looks like. Leave a little bit of space here. Put that there. That will get built after the farm, which is fine. So we can mess with the economy a little bit here. All right, so all these people have houses. That's good. So now we've got probably going to be able to hire a guy to do that. We're going to go in here and fire one of these construction workers. And he should shortly, eventually, pick up uh, working at the smithy. I think sometimes unemployed guys will go and do labor as well. So we, we don't need her to be doing all this. She can be a laborer supplying stuff. So we actually... No, we'll leave her employed because if you uh, unemploy people, they can uh, start losing money and then they'll say, oh, we need money, we're going to move out. So right now you can see this person is already selling firewood and her stall is being stocked by all these people here. Of course, she doesn't have anything to stock. That's not going to change. Now there's a trade aspect to this game. So if you go to the world map, you can see there's these three towns. It costs money to send messengers, but messengers can bring you items that you don't have or livestock. That's actually, I believe, the only way to get, currently get livestock at the start is if a uh, neighboring town has that. So I'm going to go ahead and slow this down real quick. If we are smart, we can get cows before spring. Because we have our hay drying right here. So I'm going to I'm going to come over here. We're going to build a cow shed. Now keep in mind what I said about having people having to be close to their job. So we're going to come up here. Uh, this is kind of a weird... Alright, so I'm going to line this up like that. That's going to start getting built. While we can, what we can do is we can move this guy here. We're not really worried about the warehouse quite yet. That's almost ready. So we can move that along. We can take our hay storage area right here. And I like to just build these right in front of the cow sheds. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So what these do is workers will fill these with hay from the hay dryers. And that way your cows have hay to snack on. I'm sure there's some sort of metric out there that the hardcore people, if there are even any for this game, have figured out for this. But now we have these, 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 and these. Workers will gradually take this hay as it dries, and they'll figure that out. So we now while they're building that, we have this warehouse. What we can do is there's four items per warehouse that we can um, fill in, I believe. So what I'm going to do, iron, no, we can put that in the camp center. Uh, we'll do reeds and we'll do thatch. Charcoal. Yeah, so what we can do is we can hire, again, this one that allows women and men to work. And you'll see as we progress in the game why it's important to have men work as few jobs as possible. So we're going to uncheck men. Apply to all. We'll hire a woman. And this zero zero means they're not going to stock anything. So I like to set, starting out, just a limit of... Okay, we'll, we'll do a thousand for this. And then what will happen is this area, or the these items, will get stocked up either by the person working in this warehouse or if we go down here, say laborers can restock. So now you see these laborers are coming in. They're going to start stocking up until we hit 1,000 of each item, if we have 1,000 of each item. And then that will be in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. We have somebody working at the smithy. Yes, we do. We don't really need anybody working in the thatchery just quite yet. These uh, women are just waiting for something to sell. We'll get there, ladies, don't worry. So this cow shed will be built relatively quickly because we have all these guys working on it now. And you can also kind of incentivize people for what jobs they want to work based on pay. I don't know if you remember going here, you see this wage slider. You can increase the wage or decrease the wage. For example, this is... So you say, okay, well, I want to pay my market people less so they can instead go work other jobs. And when they're doing that, they can come back here. You just set that to 90 or 80%. 
I try to be careful, possibly, so they don't become too disincentivized to do it. Well, they're building this, so we'll come back and check on that later. We can see now these are starting to trickle in, and we have four laborers and a worker doing this. See, if we hover over one of these guys, you can see this is our worker just moving stuff back and forth. Eventually, when that green bar right there that's advancing gets to the end, she's going to go take rest. She's going to go back to her house. So she's going to live in one of these nine spots. When the town gets bigger, it gets more difficult to manage, and that can be an interesting challenge part of the game. But, uh, yeah, see, she's taking rest. She's going to her house. She lives here. And you can see, actually, the connection to all the people in this house. So you have, they have two children. She works in the warehouse. He works in the smithy. So you can actually see them moving around. That's that green. So the, these uh, two must be her kids, if I had to guess. And they have wealth. They have all these items. By the end of the winter, all this will be gone. We're going to have to have farms set up. So that's why it's important for us to figure this out. Now, cows during the uh, warm months will have a pasture that they graze in. You have to define that. But for the winter, they just stay inside the cow shed and they can eat and you can breed them and then start slaughtering when they get old enough. That's also something you can individually adjust. But once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and go to the world map. I'm going to send a messenger to this town. Oh, we can't yet because we don't have a trading post. That's right. So we've got to build a trading post. And I've queued that up. We're going to probably rotate this guy. Yeah, we'll put him here. We're going to want to move him up. It's important for him to get done. So these builders are going to... We can get rid of one of these guys. That'll be fine. We have not enough charcoal. Okay, did we set this to be supplied by... Yes, we did. Huh, okay. It is already completed. They should... Well, they'll just have to supply charcoal. But if this finishes before winter, then that's going to be good for us anyway. So here's our cow shed. So we have to add a pasture if we want them to graze, but we don't have a uh, thing. So again, we're going to uncheck hire men because this, for whatever reason, this game just lets people do certain things. If you don't make sure that these are checked, your cows will all die invariably. Here's another trick. This is the stock thing. It'll let you do a whole lot more than 400. That's just the default. If you have a very full cow shed, if you have a lot of cows, you can have up to 20 per building before it starts automatically slaughtering them. So we're just going to hit this with the old spam the 9 button. See, that only lets it go up to 500, but water can go up to 1,000. So you see this up here? Carts are wearing out. So let's slow this down real quick. So we need a carpentry, which I believe is... Where is that? I can't remember. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Is that under trade? Well, I'm really struggling here. Where in the world did that go? Oh, here it is. It's not alphabetized. So if the carts were out, then it's difficult for people to move material to and from job sites. So since our town hall right here is so precariously positioned, we're going to put this guy... Let's try right here. Uneven terrain, of course. Alright, well, it doesn't want me to put this here. Let's try. You, you gotta let me put this somewhere, come on. Alright, so that is... That's just gonna go there. And we'll move that up in front of here. So we'll do that. So the uh, previous version of the game, these hay barracks, were not... Uh, buildable items. They just appeared when you place them. So that's a change that he made, I guess, to the developer of the game made to make it a little bit more difficult. That's fine. So these laborers right now are supplying right here. I'm going to go ahead and hire someone. We can go ahead and get these women out of here now that we have some more stuff for them to do because they're not selling anything. Get rid of them. They can become laborers and then we'll have two of these women working here. Okay, so they need to finish building these things. So we don't need... I think we should have... Oh, so we don't have any more nails. So they need to build more nails. I guess he's going to work. He's about to make more nails. Okay, 
metal parts. We don't need him to make any metal parts. We'll get rid of that. All right, so he should only be making nails now. Yep, so see, he's making nails, and as soon as he makes nails, they're taking them away to build this. Now, see, it's in November. If we hadn't had houses built yet, we'd be in a little bit of trouble here, but we're doing fine. We've got houses already built. We have a cow shed. As soon as this is done, we can hire someone as a trader, and we can send them to one of these towns to hopefully collect some cows. And pigs are a whole different animal, uh, no pun intended. Uh, they will eat a whole lot of stuff, but they eat a lot of stuff. So you kind of have to have a lot of food in reserve or else your populace will starve. Then pigs starve as well, animals starve. I think the guy said that he fixed in Alpha 3 when the building runs out of food stored for animals. Like see right here it says hay reserve one month in Alpha 2. If these run out, then all the cows would just cows would just spontaneously die. He said he fixed that. I don't know what he means by he fixed that. I guess we'll find out. So this is pretty well stocked. They're in the process of. I really, I I ought to be able to get that higher than 500. Maybe not. That might have been changed. All right. So this guy's mad because he's out of nails. Can't find nail anywhere. Well, that's because homeboy here is making them. So as those are done, then this will come back here. This is the can't find nail anywhere is like the kiss of death if you haven't built the smithy yet, and he's trying to build the smithy, but he can't because he doesn't have enough nails. That's like every other playthrough I did would run out of nails at the most inopportune time. Anyway. So they're in the process of finishing their stuff. They just need some more nails, some more woods. So, once this hits December, you're going to start to see snow coming down. And if you had crops, the crops would all rot or be ruined by the snowfall. But we don't have crops, so that's fine. So, winter in this game lasts from December to the end of February. And then March, it starts melting, and then you can plant your crops. So what we want to do, first and foremost, this needs to get done. We're going to slow this down. We can come down here to our farm, which is, of course, not built yet. That is, how did that end up all the way down there? Okay, we're gonna have to. We can get cows whenever, so that can get. Uh, that can get moved. Ha, moved. I know I'll be here all week. So they're gonna finish the trading post. Then they have to build the carpentry. Then they can build the farm. As long as the farm is done by say January or February, that's fine. That'll be okay. So now we have a nice uh, reserve right here in the warehouse. There's still some here. So now we don't have to hire someone to be in this thatchery the whole time because at the warehouse we have some thatch, some reeds, and the only building we're going to be building in the near future that needs thatch is the farm. And that should be fine, just like it is. So this is still waiting on 10 nails. All right, what's our dude with the nails doing? Okay, he is smithing nails. So there's your 10 nails right there. See, it says awaiting 10, reserve 10. So now someone, yep, this guy right here is gonna be moving his nails and then they're going to be able to finish this. All resources collected. So you see all your construction workers coming in here to build this. And now it's completed. So what we can do is... See, this is another one that doesn't let women work here. So you're going to hire a manager. And then you're going to hire a worker. So now we have a trading post. We have a cow shed. We have a cow shed that's stocked. We can go to our world map. And we're going to send a messenger. No manager at trading post. Now oh, you're going to be like that. Okay. So we have to wait until someone starts working at the trading post, I guess, before we can send someone. So I guess what we'll do is we will... Oh, see, this is the problem. You have such a small population. We're going to get rid of one of these guys. See if somebody... No, why would you not want to be a manager at the trading post? Why would you go to be a worker first? Anyway, okay, now we have a manager at the trading post. So we're going to go to our world map, send a messenger for 30 gold. So he's going to be traveling, speed up. So when he gets to that city, you're going to see something pop up in the corner of the screen right here. And that's going to tell us what that city is willing to export and what they are looking to get. We aren't really producing anything right now, so when we uh, start producing stuff, we can have export stock. But right now we don't have anything. 
So we can actually follow this guy. He's going to show up right there. And then it'll tell us what they're able to offer us. So they're offering cows, pigs, iron, and horses, which is good. Because that's exactly what we need. We don't need everything cost here. And if you want to breed cows, you're going to need... Well, let's do four cows and one bull. So that's going to be 200 coins. We have almost 800. But you don't want to start off with too many at first because you can't support them. This way you can have... Uh, you can get some milk from your cows. You have one bull and they will breed eventually. So now let's see. Iron. How are we doing on iron? We have 850. We don't really need any right now. But uh, let's see. We can get in trouble if we don't have any iron. How much are they wanting for iron? Oh, so that, that's cheap. So you don't want to get in too much trouble spending money early on. So we'll, we'll buy a thousand iron. I should have a setup for a while. This is finicky. All right. So now you can see they have this guy riding. So now I'll slow this down a little bit. I want to make sure. Okay, we have hay. We have water. We're set to supply. Doing all right. Now what is that? Is that a cow? So everyone, you'll see these uh, things come in from the north on this, or I don't think this is the north, it's technically the south, but you'll see stuff start to come in. And we should see at some point soon-ish some cows come down this way. Now, oh, these guys are crying about nails. I can't find nail anywhere. All right, well, this dude is trying to make sure that we have nails. Is this set? Okay, so this is something I overlooked. Laborers, up until now, had not been able to supply the smithy, so it was just the guy who was making the stuff having to go out and supply, but now that's fixed. So our guy who's actually working, when he's not taking rest of this, okay. Well, he's going to be sleeping. Now we have our cows. So you can make oxen from bulls, but they have to be at least a year old, and, oh, someone has visited. Let's see what these people have. Salt, salt is important. We're gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of salt. It's real cheap, uh, but I don't think we have enough to buy two thousand. So we're gonna buy one thousand. They want wheat, shoes, and eggs. We don't have any of that yet. But usually these people's offers and demands stay pretty consistent. Uh, lime we can now make, so it's not as big of a deal. Uh, the P Alpha Two version, you had to always buy lime. You couldn't make it. So we're pretty comfortable with that. This is a wagon with a uh, thousand iron coming into the trading post right here. So you can see it's going to come in here. And then our worker, who is almost at work, is he's going to go in here and unload the stuff. And it's going to be stored here until uh, laborers or whomever comes and moves it where it needs to go. All right, so they're going to get their nails. They're going to stop crying about their nails. See, they've got nails here. They're going to finish the carpentry, and then they're going to start working on the farm. So now you have your animals in the cow shed. You see this is updated, even though the amount has stayed the same. Now they have three months of hay and seven months of water reserves. So this is going to change dynamically based on how many animals you have. So you can see there's already some milk, and now the shops are starting to get stocked. So now this shop has milk in it. So we can actually go in and we can hire someone. To work there assuming that they have the ability to actually fill that job all right so we have a carpentry we're going to hire a man to work here again i always like to take that for laborers to have the ability to supply so he can go in and he can fix these carts that are all looking pretty rough so those will break soon if they don't get fixed so this guy is going to go to work and he's going to automatically fix all these uh carts and stuff that are not currently in good shape and when our farm gets built he will build plows for the oxen that we don't yet have so what's going to happen with these guys is you have a livestock limit the default is 20 when you get 20 cows then it's going to start slaughtering the oldest cow uh, on a rotating basis and it will always leave at least one bull so you're not left high and dry when all of your animals get slaughtered well, these guys are doing fine we got to make sure they build this farm. So we got to get these guys going on that. We've got... These are looking fine. That's good. Okay, so they're in the middle of the building this farm. We only have three uh, construction workers, builders, going right now. 
there's so much other stuff going on. We have these two guys here that's just required for you to be able to trade with people. So we have salt here, and you can see some people have already taken some of the salt to ostensibly stock this, uh, yep, right here. So that's fine. Uh, we have a woman in here, we have a woman in here. So these things that are selling, we'll see in our economy pane, you can see you have local sales. This is all of our resources that our citizens are buying. So this is our income from rent. Uh, you can see we're paying out a lot more than we're collecting in rent. We're going to have to adjust that. But the town hall is not yet built, so we can't. For the time being, though, uh, this amount of money will continue to go down. But uh, our primary focus right now should be getting this farm built. Because if, uh, if that's not built, we're going to be in trouble if it's not ready by about April or May, because that's when the sowing season ends. Now you can see the stuff starting to melt. This is, uh, okay, we need to hire more builders. What I always like to do, you can tell laborers not to be men. And that'll help. That'll free a few of them up to hopefully fill some of these slots. That's the problem with the early game, is you're going to run out of people. But what we can do, you know, we have a whole lot of building going on. People will move into your town. See right here, there's all these migration factors that they're looking at. So everything is good, except there's no housing available. So what we can do is we can start building some more houses. Of course, we don't have the uh, resources quite yet to do that, but we can go ahead and queue these up, and they'll get built when they get built. So we'll just go ahead and do... Uh, I'd just like to start with five more. Right here. All right, so that's another five houses or so. Those will get queued in. So now we have a whole bunch of stuff getting built here. But we really need this farm to get built ASAP. See, there's our, they're already starting, but these guys are still not working. We, we have so much wood. This guy can be a builder. You can be a builder. But we have to have these guys here or else traders won't come. Not enough metal parts for repair. Well, I guess that was my fault for saying you can't build any metal parts. So we're going to... We'll let this guy make some metal parts. We don't have any men working here. Don't have any men working here. All right, this is almost done. I need this to get done. So I need these people to figure their lives out and get get going here. Well, these carts are all broken. Yep, makes sense. I should have built that earlier. But you know, you live and you learn with some of this stuff. So now they're working. They got some thatch. They got some wood. Got some nails. They're in pretty good shape. That should be just about ready. They're just having to go get some more thatch, but remember we have our stockpile here and we have our stockpile here, so we're in good shape. It's all about resource allocation, and one of those resources is people. All right, so there's a messenger. I believe this is the third town. Yeah, the one that we hadn't dealt with, so let's click on here. See, so they've got chickens. They want all the stuff we don't have. Chickens are going to be important later, but we don't have a uh, chicken coop or whatever they call it here. Yeah, chicken coop here. So that'll come later. Chickens are very useful. They're low maintenance, easy to take care of. They're slaughtered in the same building. They're very efficient. So hurry up and finish this farm so we can plant stuff. Because farming is extremely important. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. So this is where you put your plows. You need a manager and you need workers. I always uncheck hire men for workers because I need them to be construction workers. So we're going to hire a manager and then open all these up. We're going to add a field. So what the way farming fields work here is you start off with one corner of the farm and it makes you click and drag. It'll only let you go so far. So we're going to go as far as this will let us go this way. Going to come down too long? Okay. Well, it won't be too long for long. Just have to go... Place is occupied by what? What's it occupied by? Okay, that shouldn't be doing that. Okay, sometimes it does that if the thing is too long, but it's not quite too long. Alright, so let's do that. So it still says place is occupied... Oh, okay! It's doing that because of the entrance to the farm building itself. So this is fine. We're going to go here, 
And then this is just kind of a weird place to put this, but that's fine. So we can go in here and we can actually do one of these numbers. It doesn't have to be square. That's fine. So we have to go in here and we have to activate the field. But before we do that, we're going to have to uh, talk about our crops. Now, this won't let you do crop rotation unless you have a manager working at the farm. So let's hope somebody comes in here right quick or else we're not going to be able to do anything like that. Let's get rid of those. Okay, that's not an open position. That's not open. That is open. So we're going to get rid of our warehouse worker. And again, until we have more people moving, we just kind of have to keep moving people around. So let's give this woman a chance to take this manager job at the farm. Or literally anyone. Okay, so now we have a manager. We can go in here and we can start doing our crop rotation. So there is a strategy to this. Do you see these three things? You have three different nutrients. And what each crop does is it takes a specific amount of each one. So you see wheat is going to take these two, but none of the third one. Buckwheat is going to take a little bit of the second one and a lot of the third one. Hemp is going to take some of the first one and a lot of the third one. So what we're going to do is we're going to have potatoes and buckwheat just alternate. Just alternate, alternate, alternate. And then you always want to have your fields have a chance to recover and be fallow. And what you can also do is you can set your cow shed to be a pasture in a fallow field if available, which we'll do. So this is ready to go. We're going to activate it. We don't have any plows, so these are going to have to be hand sewn, which is labor intensive, but it's fine. We're going to go here. We're going to make another field. These are going to be kind of ugly, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of the way this goes. See how much I can get out of this. All right, so that'll be fine. This guy can be... Well, we're going to need wheat. But potato and buckwheat is very important because that's also what pigs will eat. So let's do some wheat. You can alternate wheat, wheat, and I believe hemp is what my usual rotation is. Now, you don't have to have a fallow in here if your uh, resources match up here. So you see you have two seasons of wheat, and each season is one year, one, uh, one summer in this game. Two of these is going to be most of one of these, but then when you're, growing, when you're growing wheat, you don't have any of the blue being used up. So what you can do is then put something that uses a lot of blue, like hemp, and just a little bit of the others, and that'll refresh all the nutrients. Anyway, that's fine. So that could start getting going. Then we have... Oh, let's see, how are these guys doing? They've got plenty right there. That's fine. We're going to start another field. And most of... Honestly, most of farming in this game is just keeping on top of your resources and your fields and your crop rotation. Also, this game is kind of irritating in the way you lay out your farms because if you do it from the wrong spot then your lines can get all skewed because of the way the uh, the viewing in this game works. So right now you see that's already kind of messed up like that. So you can make farms pretty big in this game but see we can't go here because we have houses here. That's fine. What we can do, we can either do something like this but that that's ugly. That doesn't look very nice. So we're going to go here and make this too long. Are you sure? Okay, well, I guess we have to go here. So that'll be fine here. Alright, so now we have another field. That's uh, We can actually adjust him, maybe. No, not if it's already built. Alright, that's fine. We're not worried about that. We're going to go in here and we're going to do our buckwheat potato buckwheat potato just so every season that the thing is active we'll have an alternating and I'm not going to put the fallow on the same season as this one because then we have two fields that aren't being used. I'm going to stick the fallow right here in the middle and move this buckwheat potato actually you know what? No, I'm going to reverse that. So we're going to have potato and then buckwheat because this field over here is going to do that anyway. So that's good to go. That's activated. So now you see all these labor slots that opened up? Now this is where it gets 
real interesting because sowing season only lasts a little while in this game. So what you can do is you can go in here, like I said earlier, to your wage, and you're going to want to bump these guys up so people are going to want to work here. So what you'll see happen is gradually this is going to start going up and up and up. See, people are starting to come in because these jobs pay more. And of course, that hurts your economy a little bit, but it's worth it in the long run. So I'm going to move the town hall up in the queue because we're going to need to adjust our pay of our citizens real fast or things are going to get ugly because our money is draining rapidly. If you see here, our income is really, really substantially lower. Keep in mind, a lot of that is from importing, which we had to do to get started. So the real trend we're looking at here is salary per year. So last year, with the same amount of people we have now, we had a salary of $348.50, but we only had an income total of one fifty three fifty six. dollars So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to raise the rent on the houses and we're going to raise the price on the local goods. So if you do that, then your people will pay a little bit more for their goods and they'll pay a little bit more to live where they're living. But your uh, prices will be, your economy will be more stable. So what you see right here, they're in the middle of sewing this. So you have all of our workers right here are going to be, that are not sleeping, are going to be down in this field. You can't really see it too much. But they're in the middle of sewing this right now, so we'll leave them alone for a little bit. We have to make sure that this town hall is being constructed, and it is. They're in the process of gathering their materials. I might need to... Okay, no, the guy still works there. That's fine. We might need to get somebody back on the forestry. So this is where this gets fun if you don't have a whole lot of workers. Keep in mind, we only have nine men and nine women that are of working age that can really be contributing here. So they're off doing their thing. Our cows are still looking fine. That's good. Except nobody is working here anymore because everyone is at the farm. That's okay. We just have to make sure that our hay reserves and our water reserves aren't falling down too far low. But because we don't have any plows, this is going to take a while, and it's very possible we can't sow all of our fields, which is uh, less than ideal. But let's go ahead and add a pasture for these cows. We're going to go ahead and fill in probably this right here as much as we can. Be fine, you see this little crosshatch. Why is this occupied? Oh, so I'm not allowed to have the entrance be that close to something else, okay? Go on, zoom up, here we go. We'll go right here. Too short. Oh, I'll show you too short. Come on. Alright, so it doesn't like my tiny pasture idea. I can probably get this to work. If I just put it real close like this. No, it doesn't like that either. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to go this way. Alright, see, it likes it that way. That works fine. So now this is a pasture. We're going to see real quick, well, when someone starts working at the cow shed, the cows will start occupying this. So what you can do is you can either have this be a permanent pasture, which we're going to have to do because none of these fields are going to be fallow this season. And you can see you can keep track of all of your farms right here. So if there's not a fallow field available, they can go to this pasture, or what we can do is we can later attach this field to this farm, and they can use that. That'll be fine. But we gotta get this town hall built before we run out of money. They are still sowing the potato. Potato is sowed. I believe it will be grown now. So they're gonna go to this field next and sow some wheat. I think as long as this is done by May or so, it should be okay. Remember, like I said earlier, all these families came to the, the town with some food, but they're going to start wanting some meat. So once we have the town hall and these hay barracks, we can move this warehouse down. We don't need that right away. 
we're going to have to have some more people start moving in because more people means more jobs and new people that move in have a longer period of time before they actually need resources and need food. So that'll work out in our favor. So I'm going to let this run for a little bit and I'll be back in a sec. All right, so all of our fields are sown. We have our potatoes, have our wheat, and we have our buckwheat. We have our cows grazing in this pasture. Our supplies are getting a little low, but we have someone here on that. We have our first hay barrack is built right here. There's currently 41 pieces of hay in there. As these get built, they'll be uh, more stocked up. But for right now, this is fine. See, we have a newborn cow. So th what's going to happen is this will continue to increase and you're going to fill this up with cows if you want to artificially limit it so they can start slaughtering. You can lower this, but we don't have a slaughterhouse yet. So there's really no sense in doing that. But I think for right now, this is a good place to stop for today. I'll be back later with some more buildings and happenings in this town. But uh, until then, thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.